Welcome to the Geeks Assembled podcast. Be afraid. Be very afraid. Hello there. Yes, we are Geeks Assembled and we have assembled here today to talk about a, a classic comedy from the BBC as we're going Halloween with Bottom in Terror. And I hear Lee's a fan of Bottom. So let's go over to Lee. Go ahead, Lee. Yes, I absolutely love Bottom. I, I, I always uh, like to get this out and watch it every so often. Um, yeah, it's, uh, surprisingly, this wasn't aired on Halloween. It was um, January 1995 this was broadcast. So I don't know what, some great pun in there. But um, yeah, uh, Rick Mail and Ian Edmondson, they were the sort of kings of modern slapstick. Of the, the, you know, they were the forefront of the alternate comedy in the early 80s. And so this was bottom of the TV series was the was the last time they sort of worked together as a team, as a comedy duo, because you never saw them together after the, after the bottom. Um, but this episode, Terror, it's, it's one of my favourites. Um, you know, happy, ruddy Halloween. Um, it's just the, the, uh, the, the cattle prod, uh, you know, give it to me, give it to me. And every time he turns it on, he, he fouls himself. Um, that is just, so, so, I mean, it's so disgusting, but it's, it's so funny because everybody else is, oh, you know, and, and, his, his, and his costume, his, the tights up of his waist, his little red horns. I mean, Rick Mill was, he was a comedy genius. I mean, he's sorely missed. Um, but this episode, you've got everything. You've got the Sprouts Mexican with, <laughs> with the... Um, shall we say, the fire from the rear end afterwards. Um, you've got, uh, <laughs> you've got everything. You've got, you've got Aidan with some dressed as a banana. Uh, it's, it's so funny. It's, it makes really like, and those kids, the three kids, you know, trick or treat, mister. Um, you know, what do you mean trick or treat? You know, he'll give you, give us, give us some, Money or some sweets, I can give you some sweets if you want to get arrested. It's it's the humour is very as I say it's alternative. I know it's not everybody's cup of tea, but it's very, very funny. And for me, the it's the slapstick, it's the hitting in the face. They were so so precise with that. I've I saw them live three times when they went on the bottom tour. <coughs> and you could you could not you actually thought they were hitting each other. It was just how they got that off to a team is just amazing. Uh, yeah, and you say you've got um, Dave Hedgehog and Spud Gun, their other partners in crime. Brilliant characterizations. It's, for me, I, I miss this. I wish they made an, a fourth series, but you know they only made three series. And this episode, Terror, is up there. So for me, I'm giving this a 10. I love it. A 10? Now, does Craig enjoy a bit of bottom? Go ahead, Craig. I love Bottom, especially this series. And um, I think it's one of my favourite episodes. Well, I like that one, this one, Terror, but I also like the Christmas one. Um, and I like the one, the New Year's one that they did, where he has like a party and he's on crutches and they smack him into the ceiling, Rick Mail. That one, brilliant. Um, there's so much I like about Bottom. Um, I, I love all the, the toilet humour. Uh, I love the pace of it. I, I like how it could be, I don't know if this is correct, but it feels like it's like a follow-on from the young ones, like when they've grown up sort of thing or living in the same area sort of thing. I, I don't know if that's the case, but it sometimes feels like that. Um, and yeah, I mean, I love, uh, I like the, the friends that, Dave Hedgehog and Spud Gun. I love how they all come come over and hang out, and it's just really hilarious. Uh, I love 
when they you do the cattle prod, uh, that makes me laugh out loud. And especially whenever Brussels sprouts are involved in a bottom scene. Um, yeah, it was one of my, fa- some of my favorite moments in bottom. And yeah, I'd, I'm going to give it a 10 because it's just great. And I'm, I'm not, nothing really beats it. So, yeah. A 10. Thank you, Craig. Now let's go to our very own Brad and Angelina. Well, before they split up, that was. Let's go to Alex and Susan. Go ahead, Alex and Susan. Okay, well, I'd just like to talk about the, the, original, the original bottom, so all the shows as a whole, and then um, Alex will probably fill you in about the, the Halloween episode. The, I, the brilliance of Rick Mail and Aid Edmondson is just... It's it's mind blowing and it is hilarious. I I loved them from young ones and I, and and I watched them through Filthy Rich and Cat Flop, Filthy Rich and Cat Flop, and then through the whole series of Bottom and I, it just blew my mind how they maintain their energy, they maintain their their, their absolute devastating like you know. Uh, tormenting of each other in, in, in wonderful ways and they were so good at the slapstick as Lee had mentioned and they were so great at the at the their uh, they're pushing each other to the limit and then then through the limit way past the limit they're, they're amazing and uh, and so you know if it's if it's like any of the other ones, I'll give it a nine. So, and here's Alex with with the. Um, yeah, I remember uh, as far as the Halloween special goes, uh, how unique it was. I mean, bottom in a way to me is almost like a live, um, yeah. a live action cartoon, and maybe Danger Mouse from the '80s was trying to imitate it a little bit, but I digress. Um, <laughs> But I mean, it is good. That was the similar school of comedies like The Young Ones and other things where they really tried to push the envelope and challenge and be different and be scandalous and all that. And you have to admit, I mean, some of the jokes offend me, but that's okay. You know, it's not made for just one person. So, uh, But it is a good show. Uh, as Susan said, they have plenty of energy. Uh, you know, they're trying different stuff. They're trying to do all kinds of levels, and you have to respect that. Uh, a lot of American comedies don't really do that. They just want ratings or they want to be popular. And that's one thing that I've always liked about British shows. Not that they don't want to be popular, but they tend to push the envelope more than the American does usually. Um, but, yeah, I liked it. Uh, it's very strange, but I liked it. It's very cartoonish, but in a good way. And uh, like I said, it challenges the viewer, and that's one of the reasons why I like it. So, you know, I'll watch it again just to sort of remind myself that not every show is the same, not all types of humor is the same. And uh, even my family liked that as well with Faulty Towers and Monty Python, that you have sort of this psychedelic, sort of have this scattered, it works on so many different levels. You can watch it if you're 10, you can watch it if you're 40 and you'll still find it funny. You'll still find things that you don't notice. And, and so, right, right, but the I'd, I'd say the Halloween episode, I'd give it, uh, I'd give it a 7. I'd give it a 7.5. Oh, 7.5. Thank you, Alex and Susan. Now let's head over all the way to Germany with Beef Dad. Go ahead, Beef Dad. Good evening. Um... I was a great fan of alternative comedy when it came out. Um, actually, probably one of the first big series of alternative comedy was The Young Ones. Um, bottom, ah, uh, yeah, love this one. This was this was always one of my favourites. Um, basically because of special effects that they had to use for it um yeah with the Mex- <laughs> sprouts mexicano that was just amazing especially when everybody had eaten them and 
were all breaking wind, but instead of breaking wind, they were breaking fire. And it was just brilliantly done. It was just so cleverly done. Um, Spud Gun, well, he, Spud Gun is Spud Gun. He's brilliant. He's a big lumpy lad, and he's very clever. Um, Christopher Ryan playing Hedgehog, or Christopher Ryan had already done The Young Ones, and quite a few other things on television, but before he did uh, Bottom with them. Um, a. Edmondson, I loved him as Vivian in The Young Ones, and he was brilliant as Eddie in this. And uh, Rick Mayle as Richie. I mean, look, they were in an incredible pairing. They really were. And believe me, I can, t I can tell you, they weren't just like that on television uh, and on stage. Um, they were like it in real life. I managed, I bumped into Rick Mail at a party that I went to at the end of the 80s, uh, Miriam Margulies' house. And I had a friend with me who worked in a bank. And they, uh, Rick Mail asked him what he did. And he said, oh, I work for, I work for NatWest Bank. And he says, oh, you'll be one of the first up against the wall when the revolution comes. So they were, they were like that off screen as well. Um, uh, hysterically funny. I loved them. I loved the kids. The kids were brilliant. Uh, it's only just a very short scene with them, but they were superb. And of course, Lisa Coleman playing Doreen, who was just a little piece of magic. Um, yeah, I love this episode. I love the fun. Um, every time I think about it, I get the giggles. Uh, so for me, it gets a 10. A 10. Thank you, Beef Dad. Now over to Connor. Go ahead, Connor. Let's see what you have to say about Bottom. Um, this is not my type of humour. Uh, I don't really like alternative. Um, <laughs> but it was a good, it was, it was fairly good. I, I liked the kids especially. That was my favourite scene out of all of it. It was just, they were wonderful. Um, little devils as well. Um, the, the characters, you know, you've got um, Eddie, you've got Richard, you've got Hedgehog, you've got Spudgun. All of them were great characters. Um, yeah, as I said, it wasn't. It's not really my type of humour, so I didn't particularly find the farting fire thing and all of the uh, the sprouts and stuff particularly funny. But um, I appreciated, I appreciated it in a way. I'll say, um, yeah, I don't really have much to say that other people haven't said. So um, I think overall, I'll give it a two out of ten. A two out of ten. Thank you, Connor. Now. I have to say, actually, I'm going to side with Connor on this one. I do like the innuendos. I think they're funny, and I think there are moments in this that are funny. However, there are moments I don't like, like the farting thing, the farting fire. I didn't really find that very funny. The stuff that was in the bar for me, that was just silly, ridiculous. I mean, I, I get it. I get it. I get why people think it's funny. but. I like the innuendos, like I say, and it's funny when he dresses up as a as a as a banana, uh, things like that. But no, it's it's really not for me. I, I think it started off all right the first few minutes, and then it kind of towards the end of the episode was like everybody was just farting fire, and I completely lost interest, absolutely completely. Uh, yeah, I, I I think I'll give it. I'll give it a, I think I'm giving it a one. I'm going to give it a one. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to throw the floor open to everyone wants to speak. I'm a bit stunned by that. Yes, I'm totally stunned by that as well. <coughs> Before the cast started, he loved it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah I, I, I love the raising of the devil at the party by Rick Mail. That, that was, that was just, oh, I mean, it was so silly, but it was funny. It was really, really funny. Um, 
Yeah, I, yeah. The the idea of homebrew that's in the bath that was done in twenty minutes. Yeah, you, yeah. You you think it's stupid, um, but you've got to remember these are alternative comedians, and anything is possible in that universe. And <laughs> it was it was it was funny. It made me laugh. It's surreal, surreal comedy. Surreal comedy. That's what it is. Um, yeah, I mean, at the beginning of the episode with the the uh, Richie was getting the was it uh, double entendre disease? Uh, you know, can I drink your juice? <laughs> oh, she's sausage. Was Ben Elton involved in bottom? Um, no, no. It was it was it was written by A. Edmondson and Rick Mayle themselves. Oh, cool. Yeah, it says in the credits. Does anyone else have anything else to add? Yeah, I just, I mean, if it's special effects, and, and if, if it's like special effects and stuff, it's more than just fart jokes. I mean, it's got, it's got that, that uh, sort of, uh, you know, more than, uh, it go, because it goes all the way off the, the deep end, you know, it's, uh, it's more than just the, the bottom humor. <laughs> well, I no, mean, I mean, it, it works on so many levels. Yeah. You know, I mean, so, you have to sort of so I disagree with Alan and, and, and Connor so much. Oh, oh but and, I've just made £10 out of it. Well, I mean, you know, not not everybody's gonna like every single joke or every single character or whatever. It yeah. depends on you know what appeals to you for humor. You know, I mean, I like bottom, to... sorry, go I mean, on. you guys agree? Maybe bottom is a little bit like the Marx Brothers in the sense that you know it's all over the board. You know, it goes here, it goes there. You know. well, it's like Helen Keller of comedy. No, you don't. You don't agree. The, the, the humour, the, the, that type of slapstick humour harks back to the Marx Brothers, to Laurel and Hardy, Charlie Chaplin, Buster Keaton. The, the, it goes all the way back to them. And you've got to be thankful for those uh -huh. people. Yeah. Well, that's an idea. Yeah, particularly the physicality side of it. Yeah. yeah it's very over the top, though. Yeah. Yeah, but going back to the, to the, to the fiery farts, you yes, get, I didn't like that. You wouldn't get that in a TV show now. Health and safety. You would not put your actors. Yeah, because that. that was real fire, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. I mean, Chris, Chris well, Ryan, his, his arm was on fire. It was a mm. bit like when the silver nemesis uh, <clears throat> shot off into space. Why are we going to talk to him? Sorry about that. Wrong show, Craig. <laughs> <laughs> Come that's, back that's to us, called, Craig. Come back to that's, us. That's Come called to, surrealism. <laughs> Come back. To, the bottom is calling you. Anyway, does anyone else have anything to add on bottom terror? Yeah, maybe you can give your real thought now. Did okay, I'll, I'll give my... Uh, my real vote would probably be a... I'm going to lose £10 now. It's probably going to be, uh, I'd give it a uh, 4.5. I'd give it a 4.5. Like I said, I liked the beginning of it, and there were scenes in the middle that I liked, but as it got towards the end, it just like, and there was, like, I didn't like all the farting and all that. And when he farted, when, when he had that gun, I thought, and he kept on changing his tights, I thought it was a little bit... Yes. I, I know it's, I know, I get it. Some people find it funny, but I don't find it funny when it's over the top uh, yeah. like that. And that's just, yeah, it's selective, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose some people's bottom is not some people's Heidi High. Yeah, exactly. And what's wrong with Heidi High? Heidi High campers. Welcome to my uh, plans. That's, you've just said it all. You just said it all there. In the Hawaiian <laughs> ballroom today, Ted Borbess. And on that bombshell. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> anyway, does anyone else have anything to add about bottom? I was going to say Heidi High then. About bottom, we will get doing Heidi High, people, don't worry, at some point. But does anybody else have anything to add about bottom? Usually Lee gets the last word. Yeah, I do. Oh, see, no, all right then. Well, I'd like to thank everybody here for joining me. I'd like to thank you for watching. Tell us what you think about this episode of Bottom, this Halloween episode. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And as ever, look after yourself. Take care, and we'll see you next time. Bye, everybody.